Hey guys, welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. Today is Artanis release day, and as you can see, I already have a copy of Artanis. A copy of Artanis. I bought a copy of Legacy of the Void, pre-ordered it, and thus I get Artanis a week early. And it's Wednesday because, of course, the EU gets things a day late. So this is the first day that Artanis has been out, and uh, I'm really looking forward to playing him. Uh, excuse me for just a second. Uh, I think he's going to be incredibly strong. I think he's going to be incredibly fun. Uh, I've actually had one game with him already, just to kind of try him out to make sure he's not incredibly broken. And he's not. He seems like a really fun hero. So what I'm going to do today, this is an AI game. I'm going to go through an AI game and give you kind of my first impressions of him. So he is a StarCraft warrior. He is filling that gap in the uh, in the rotation, so to speak. So now you can do any form of stack daily at all. There's at least one person filling each role for each game, each universe. So there's one for Warcraft, Diablo, and uh, and StarCraft now. Whereas before there was not a uh, StarCraft warrior, but there is now. So. He seems to be incredibly, or he seems to be incredibly fun. Uh, his mobility seems to be deceptively small. Um, his E is only good if you can, well, it, this is his mobility, and it only works if it lands on an enemy hero. And even then, it puts you to where the enemy hero was, so you're not going to get too, too, too far at all. And his Q doesn't actually move you anywhere, because during the duration, you can't move where you are, and uh, you will just teleport back to where you are a little bit like that. So, basically, you have to use your abilities very, very well. His trait seems to be incredibly strong, and if you can keep it up uh, often, like if you can keep uh, auto-attacking things, you can actually get a significant amount of damage off. But again, I think the problem will come from his mobility, which is fine. Uh, I think that there's there's not too much problem with that happening. So it looks like we're up against a mm, relatively heavy uh, auto-attack, and so I think I don't really like this one. While he does have some mana issues in the late game, uh, he doesn't seem to be that big of a deal. And uh, it's kind of cool if it misses, but you shouldn't be missing, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, you shouldn't actually take this one ever, because you shouldn't ever miss. Um, that one's kind of cool. I actually really like this one. A block on demand is really nice. This is kind of cool, but again, Twin Blades isn't really going to be your wave clear. And Season Marksman is always good, but I think Reactive Parry is going to be your best talent on this tier, at least for the moment. What this means is it means that you can just do abilities. At, and, and while his mobility is deceptively low... He can do a surprising amount of, of damage without actually people being able to keep up with him. And that there, there, I'm not sure if this is a bug or if it's just weird or if I'm just being dumb, but there seems to be some form of weird um, interactions. Oh god, I missed. Um, between activating his W, um, which is his uh, it triggers basic attacks. It basically acts um, as a basic attack buff. Next two hit instantly. A bit like Frost One Hungers, but doesn't restore the mana. Um, but it's, there, uh, it's strange. I'm having actually quite a difficult time using it. So that combo there that I did, where you swap position—oh god, my got wrecked. Where you swap positions with someone that should be right here. Um, where you swap positions with someone and then um, then lunge at them. Is that? I feel like it to be quite successful because when you swap positions with someone, they almost always don't duke your um your return, which of course does more damage. Uh, I really like this. I really like the range and speed of Blade Dash. I think it works really, really well. Uh, I don't particularly like this because it doesn't. You like, there's no reason to have it at low health. It doesn't give you a particular um usefulness at low health. And while this is good. Uh, I don't think the basic attack is going to be your real main damage. So I think uh, lethal al altracity, al alacrity. I don't know, Le lethal alacrity, whatever that move is, is actually going to do quite. Going to be your main form of damage. As you can see there, dashing in, getting double hit on everyone, does a, a lot of damage incredibly quickly. Now we really should be going after the Lieutenant Morales here, and I should be able to get a stun off. Not a stun off, a dash off. D couldn't get the kill there, but no worries. He does have a surprising amount of burst in the late game when you take up a when you pick up a couple of late game talents. That burst is uh, quite ridiculous, in fact. So there's a really cool thing you can do. You can dash behind the gate, and while you will take a few cannon shots, um, you if you have someone there with you, it means you can actually grab someone just as they go back behind the gate, which I think is really, really nice. There isn't enough heroes that can really uh, make behind the gate a less safe place. And I really like that with Artanis. I think that's a really cool feature that he has. Uh, as you can see there, you, d you do continue to take cannon shots and auto attacks while you're dashing, so ranged attackers will still harass you and will still beat you up. But... He seems pretty fun. As far as strength goes, his numbers seem really strong. Uh, like I was getting a, a lot of numbers with him uh, in the early um in, in the game I was playing earlier. Now while I wasn't up to par with actually in the Zebo that absolutely trashed me. Um, oh, I missed. Oh, I totally missed. I suck. Um, he does seem to get relatively high numbers for a uh, a warrior, which is actually really really nice. I, again, I think his mobility is going to be the problem. As you can see, I'm top of hero damage. Uh, he, he's surprisingly tanky, actually. He plays very similarly to Sonya, um, but with a little less burst and a little more kind of just harass, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Now, this is a very bad spot for me to be in, so I'm going to use my ears and escape. 
sit back. Where are we do over here? Okay, so you can heal me up. Uh, and now at level seven, I really like blade dash damage. 150% uh, just means it hits incredibly hard. Uh, follow through does seem like a very good ability if you're going for a basic attack build. There will be a basic attack build for him, um, but at the moment I'm not really playing on it. So blade dash. It means your first sweep, which, uh, as you can see, it deals like. 60 damage, so 150% more means it will deal um, the same amount as your dash backwards. So it's actually a really quite a big damage increase. 150% of anything's quite big actually. So here's a cool talent you can use when you get in behind someone. Is you can dash on them, and then when they think they've escaped past you, just swap positions with them really quick, and then put them in the middle of your team. And they're going to have a really hard time getting away from you. It's, that move is incredibly strong. And it's going to be quite deceptive. Uh, how strong it actually is, the swap positions one, because you're going to want to use it on the tank to get them out of position so they can't peel, or on a DPS when they overstretch their bounds and just kind of get out of position a little bit. I wouldn't particularly use it as harass or as an engage tool, because if you use it as an engage tool, you're most likely going to get incredibly out of position incredibly quickly. So, yeah, but I think it's incredibly good for chasing people down. The fact that you can instantly body block off it's very, very strong, obviously. So here's something that I would I would use it for. I would use it to get Zagara out of position, and then dash on Zagara, dealing big damage, and then get in her face, hit her with the basic attacks, and then really just try and deal as much damage as possible. Now, because I have my trait here, you need to be aware of this trait at all times, and use it to the full potential. And now if Murky can get this kill, we can do magic things. I need to vision... Oh, I missed. I suck. That would have been nice if I if I could have um if I could have got it um yeah it's he seems really really fun his strength is probably going to come from the ability to just dive the back line and be uh, an off tank when needed so that kind of dynamic role that you can fulfil as you can see he does have some mana problems here I haven't run completely out of mana yet but I have been spam spamming my abilities I think that using your twin blade is going to be very nice for just uh, poking damage and whatever. It does reset the cooldown of your auto attack, so it's best to, to use an auto and then cast it. I used Purifier Beam last game, and it seemed kind of good, but kind of awkward to get off. So I'm going to try this one, this this game. The uh, and, and I don't know what the cooldown on either of these is because it doesn't actually tell you, which is kind of strange. But uh, 50 seconds, okay, that's cool. So it's so it's going to be up quite a lot, and the unlimited range is really good, particularly on a map like this, because it means that I can just throw it down like now. Obviously, as with most uh, most alts and that kind of stuff, it will dismount you and uh, put you up. Off your mount and uh, mean that you lose all kind of stuff and it'll stop you moving most time. But as you can see, sometimes you get a really nice hit out of it anyway. So Illidan's now out of position. Let's see if I can't get a swap on him. Boom! Get the combo off. Yeah, there we go. He's dead. So the reason I like again, I'm just going to talk about this one more time. Uh, I'm not sure about him having a combo similar to uh, Kerrigan or other melee damage dealers that you can um, that you can see. I'm not sure if he has that. But I do think that using your Q effectively is probably going to be the most, uh, the most, the, the highest skill cap. And basically, what you want to do is you want to use it when you know you're going to hit them with both ways, both um, both travels, I guess, is the way to describe it, both both slashes. And the way you do that is you can either predict where they're going and hit them before it, or, and this is uh, my personal favorite, is you use it when they're forced to run into it. So, which is why I like using the E to begin with, because you can force them out of position. And then you, oh, I wonder if that one shots him. Uh, 170 damage probably won't. In fact, it won't do anywhere near one shotting him. Um, yeah, so so you can force them out of position and force them to run at ang an angle they wouldn't, they would otherwise not like to run at. And then you can um, punish them with the Q. Uh, I think it's best used on the back line if they're running away and trying to get a lot of damage. I do think that engaging, just walking up to them and engaging, is going to be incredibly effective. Uh, obviously, you want to be behind your tank when you do this. And uh, if you really, really want to, you can do other funny things as well. Now. This is where his damage really starts to come through. I, the Twin Blade Strike three times basically gives a 50% damage on your W, which only has a 4 second cooldown. Incredibly strong. I do think the Phase Bulwark would be good if you're getting poked down by Mage Heavy teams, but at the moment I think Triple Strike is going to be your best friend for this particular bit. So, in a situation like this, you can do really efficient wave clear under tower, and you get regen globes while doing this, which is really, really nice. Now, Illidan has overextended a little bit here, so let's see if I can't punish him for it. Put that one down there, and he's dead. Well played. So, uh, so as you can see, this is quite a nice. It's a massive area. While it doesn't deal that much damage, it's just nice and intimidating. So you can. A lot of people will try and duke. It. Obviously, these are AI, so they're just going to duke any ability that comes down. But um, a lot of people will try and duke it when it doesn't actually do that much damage. And the blind is the is the most devastating bit of it. So I try and cast it on a backline heavy when they ha or a frontline heavy when they have a lot of uh, basic attackers. I try to take full advantage of the blind rather than the damage. So, one of the really cool things about this, and I said this, uh, I just, I'm, I'm completely dead here by the way. Um, I said this when I was playing uh, Thrall, 
is Artanis has another ability where it only damages heroes. It doesn't damage um, minions, as you can see with his E. It only swaps place for the hero, it doesn't swap place with anyone else. So uh, it's quite nice for throwing out over a minion wave to really catch them out of position. And that's going to be really strong in the laning phase. Uh, if someone's diving at your tower or whatever, you can swap positions with them if they're really close, if they're in melee. You can swap positions with them and put them behind your tower, which of course which means it's a free kill. So if you're laning against Artanis, he can kind of act like Stitches, but kind of better. Oh, he is dead as a doornail. Yep, ain't surviving that. So the reason I died there was because I overextended with the E, the one thing I said you shouldn't do. And that's the danger of engaging with it. If you just get uh, focused down and bursted upon, you're just going to die incredibly, incredibly quickly. And you really, uh, you really shouldn't be doing that. So I think the best way to play him is play him as you would play any other bruiser. Stay at the back uh, and then dive on the back line whenever you can. And while you're at the front line, just feel free to poke and stuff like that. His cooldowns are quite are quite nice and low on some of them. Like, uh, Blade Dash is only 10 seconds. But the attack itself takes one and a half seconds, so it actually feels closer to an eight second cooldown than anything else. Pin Blade is obviously four seconds, which is incredibly strong, because it means you're going to have block up quite a lot of the time. You're just going to be dealing a, a lot of damage. I'm not sure how efficient he is at taking boss. Because of his trait, which is incredibly effective, and you need to keep an eye on that when you're when, when you're dueling someone, remember that, that you have the trait. And, you, and you're going to want to use it as much as possible. Um, so, I'm, so, I'm not sure how exactly it works. Well, I don't know exactly how it works. Uh, basically, when you're below 50% health, you gain a shield. When you basically attack things, um, when the shield's on cooldown, the shield comes off cooldown incredibly quickly. That's pretty much how it works. So, yeah, I think he's really, really strong. Uh, as far as taking jungle, because he has that trait, he's, uh, he's going to be very good at, at jungling. Or he should be good or better than some at jungling, shall we say. Uh, here's someone who doesn't know how the medevac works. Um, I really like the versus heroes one. Uh, it basically means you have a giant killer for the next three attacks. So you're going to deal like 6% of their uh, HP. Actually, 7.5%. Yeah. You're going to deal 7.5% of their HP with one ability. So every four seconds you can deal 7.5 HP worth of damage. That's quite big. Um, especially for a bruiser, someone who's not incredibly... Oh, that was the wrong ability. It's someone who's incredibly used to dealing massive amounts of damage. Dealing that amount of damage just whenever you want to is actually going to be really, really nice. Why is the tribute's warnings down here? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how fa how powerful it is to poke people when you're miles away from them. So I can just go, yep. And then they all just cut away. So it means that we buy us a little bit more time, and then Zagara's out of position. And then you use an ability and die because you... Oh, I missed everyone. Thank Christ for that. Oh, the grab bomb is down. Big hit. Oh no, he has a raising up. That sucks. Uh, okay, here we go. I need to land. I need to land this. I need to land this. I'm gonna miss it. Oh, I landed it. Oh no, I didn't. Right. Oh god. See what I mean? It's so difficult to actually like to keep people's faces when they're running away from you because your cooldowns, while they're kind of nice, aren't amazing. Now, here we could go crazy and do a crazy big kill. No, I got no back. That's actually really good for me. Oh, that sucks. The range is so deceptively small, man. The range is so small. It's disgusting. Burst damage. Woo! <laughs> so yeah, you, you you can deal a lot of burst damage with our talents. If you get up in someone's face and you have both of your abilities up, uh, you can deal 7.5% of their health and then deal a massive hit when they try and run away from you. So all in all, I think he's really fun. I think the Q and W build is going to be the go-to build for the start, but then maybe as the meta changes, an auto-attack build might come through. If you have someone like uh, Lieutenant Morales on the team, the auto attack build might just be better overall. But I think to begin with, the other uh, blade dash build is going to be pretty good. I've looked at the numbers before he came out, and just playing him just kind of reassure the numbers. Uh, I don't know why this happens. Uh, you don't see him in the in the post game screen, but you know whatever. So if you look at his numbers, Valor beat me, but of course Valor's an assassin, so I've got to expect that. But I managed to top. Uh, wow, Murky did like no damage. Oh well. Uh, I managed to top everyone else by quite a significant amount. Uh, obviously, Valor just managed to smash me. But that's because I'm not very good at the character yet. And I do believe that, that he has quite a significantly high skill cap. What with launching abilities and whatnot. He's, um, yeah. He's going he's gonna to be quite difficult to play to the maximum potential. But I do think he has quite a lot of potential for just scoring picks. Being generally quite good. And of course, he's as that uh, warrior role, is going to be quite good as an off-tank. So, those have been my thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. I'm probably going to do a guide on Artanis at some point when I get to grips with him a little bit more. I think he's crazy fun. If you haven't pre-ordered uh, Legacy of the Void, you can still pre-order it and you can still gain access to Artanis. Um, yeah, give him a go. Legacy of the Void is obviously going to be a great game. It's StarCraft 2. If you haven't played any of those, you probably should. 
they're, they're really fun games. Artanis is going to be good. You can get a deluxe Disney one and get a mount. I didn't get that because I don't really like the mount. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. I have been Mr. G, and I'll see you next time.